Each year after Ramadan, Indonesia experienced one of the largest human migrations ever. For Eid al-Fitr, millions of people across the wide archipelago of the country go from big cities to their rural hometowns. Let's just say that this huge migration known as Mudik makes Chris Rea's driving home for Christmas appear blissfully simple by comparison. For ferries, planes and trains, special services are provided. There is also live coverage of the traffic as thousands of Sumatran residents make their way back to the cities and villages. Despite the government's best efforts, Indonesia's transportation system has been unable to handle this significant challenge. That is, up until now. All of this is possible because one of Southeast Asia's largest infrastructure projects, a network of roads spanning all of Indonesia that includes the trans Sumatera Toll Road, which will once be finished, run the whole length of the island. The construction of this enormous road, which winds through Sumatra, the second largest island in Indonesia, is far from simple. Nevertheless, it is already having a significant impact on Sumatra in a variety of ways. About the size of California, Sumatra contributes over a quarter of the nation's GDP. Despite this, navigating the area is not always easy. A little of a bumpy ride is to be expected while traveling by vehicle for any substantial distance on the island due to its limited and completely disconnected rail system. All of that would change under the toll road plan which was revealed in 2015. We learned more from Amy Widjastuti, BIM manager at Indonesia's state-owned construction firm Hutama. Karia. Reducing logistical costs and travel times across the island was the original goal of the Trans Sumatra Toll Road. The goal of the government was to accelerate the island's economic expansion. The plan was extensive, from the port of Bakauheni in the south to the metropolis of Banda Ake in the north. The road would cover over 3,000 kilometers of length. Similar roads would branch off from the main highway to connect cities along the island's more isolated western coast with important eastern towns and ports. The main highway would offer a direct route across the island. It was expensive. A staggering 37 billion US dollars was allocated to finish the project over a construction phase that lasted over 10 years. 2015 saw the start of work after Hutama Karia received the contract. Any civil engineer's wish list for the ideal environment to construct a road would probably look something like this. To avoid having to construct bridges over rivers or other highways, you would first choose a lovely, long-level tract of land. Ground conditions play a significant role. Strong, dry, well-compacted soil that can withstand the weight of all the traffic is required. Extremes of temperature and humidity should also be avoided as they can stress and impair the quality of the road. Water is a big no-no as it can seep into the ground and undermine the foundations. Make sure the ground you're working on is free from barriers like trees, boulders and dense flora to make your life easier and avoid wasting time paving away. So how does Sumatra fare? Let's just say that the island is covered in some of the world's densest, greenest jungles in large portions. You see what I mean? The 28km section of road between Pematang Siangtar and Serbalawan is a good example of the difficulties encountered. This crucial section of road that connects the Kuala Tanjung, an industrial port with Parapat, a popular tourist destination nearby, and the important city of Medan. Even merely conducting the survey for the route, which wound through remote, deep rainforest was never going to be simple. The Humata Karia team used cutting-edge tools like LiDAR to address these problems, which could subsequently be included in Bentley Systems' infrastructure engineering software. In that, it transmits a pulse toward an object and counts the time it takes for the pulse to return to compute distance. LiDAR is similar to sonar and radar. The data generated by these measures, which are made at a pace of roughly 500,000 per second, can produce an exceedingly precise map of the ground. LiDAR surveys are often carried out from aircraft, however, this was swiftly disregarded for the trans Sumatera road as a costly and an unworkable alternative. Instead, the team employed a drone to map the route's terrain with a tolerance of 25 centimeters. Along with accuracy, LiDAR's use of laser pulses has other benefits. The laser beam's light can flow through delicate flora just like light waves can through a forest. The crew can map out the dense jungle by measuring the strength of the light that is reflected to create a three-dimensional image of the survey region. With the use of this technology, the survey for this section of the road was completed in just 28 days, nearly 100 days earlier than anticipated. 
the team faced challenges below ground as well because the construction location was located in a humid rainforest which had less than ideal ground conditions. 13 meters of soft soil and clay were revealed by soil tests. Nobody needs to be an engineer to understand that those are not the best circumstances for building a road that will be used by hundreds of thousands of vehicles. When the soil is not solid or strengthened, huge trucks will frequently cross the road, causing fractures to form, according to Widyastuti. Essentially, the geotextile is a sheet made of non-woven polyester and polypropylene. It is a soil top layer that can be applied to stop soil displacement. A strong set of tools is required to manage a project that encompasses everything from soil samples to LiDAR mapping to make sense of the massive amount of data. The Hutama Karia team went to Bentley Systems for this, whose program portfolio has elevated them to the top of the infrastructure engineering software market. The project team can visualize the task in several different ways because of Bentley software's ability to incorporate data from many sources, such as LiDAR scans to build an accurate digital model of the project. To identify issues and display them in highly visual ways, Bentley Luminati was used to produce a visualization of the road. In one instance, the visualization was utilized to rapidly identify the necessity for a higher bridge clearance because the planned path would have conflicted with an existing road. These cutting-edge technological solutions are crucial for a project that depends on governmental support to keep prices down. According to Widya Stuti, we employ all of these resources to develop a digital transformation of the project, ensuring that the toll road would be in the best condition for the next 40 or 60 years. The economy of Sumatra will greatly benefit once the road is finished. The island has a thriving tourism business as well as huge mineral riches that originally gave it the appellation Island of Gold. Sumatra is a major producer of tea, coffee, rice and corn, in addition to having enormous reserves of oil, silver and coal. These export businesses will all gain significantly from the project since road travel times are expected to be cut in half and logistics cost will be decreased by 30%. Who will profit from this economic growth though? We chatted with Irham Yunadi of the advocacy organization Haka, short for Forest, Nature and Environment of Ake. Many of the island's poorer residents rely on the existing roadways that the new toll route will bypass for a significant portion of their income. It has now been suggested that their enterprises be attempted to be duplicated along the new highway. Local villages often feature modest, medium-sized enterprises like roadside stalls where many people might stop for lunch, dinner or even just a cup of coffee while on a break from diving, according to Yardi. Along with the human factor, Sumatra's diverse ecosystem, which is home to numerous critically endangered creatures, is also a source of concern. The Kerensi Seblat National Park, the largest of its kind on the island and one of the most significant tiger conservation sites in the world, is bordered by a branch road that connects the main highway to the city of Padang. One of the major species that still exist in the wild on Sumatra is the tiger, stated Yunadi. There will be a rise in human wildlife conflict activities as tigers roam into community areas as the road fragments their range. Economic development will virtually always be at war with the natural environment in a region as lush and wild as Sumatra, and there is no simple solutions. Absolute poverty levels in Indonesia have decreased from over 70% in the 1980s to less than 10% today, thanks to the country's economic growth. There have been some wildlife concessions. In a few places, bridges were constructed where the road crossed wild elephants' migratory routes. The elephants can go around without encountering the roads, thanks to these bridges. Although the road may have its detractors, organizations like Haka want constructive participation in its construction. There is still more work to be done if the road is to be completed by its anticipated completion date of 2024. Now just over 650 kilometers of it is in use. Once fully operational, it will have a significant impact on the island and provide Sumatra with the essential piece of contemporary infrastructure it needs to continue expanding. While the wider effects of this are still uncertain, Munich participants will undoubtedly experience a smoother trip. Revenue model the casual loop diagram, CLD, of the project's revenue is used as a basis for a simulation or modeling of the TSDR system. 
The idea of supply and demand is dominant in this revenue simulation when analyzing the potential of each function. The functions intended to be added to TSTR system, such as motorcycle lane integration, rest area development, dry port integration, median railways integration, tourism park development and fiber optic networking are divided into two parts. The first part of the simulation focuses on the toll roads role as a primary source of revenue. In this simulation, three tariff scenarios for each function will be explored to see how much money each function has the potential to produce. The first phase of the TSDR construction is expected to start in 2016 and it's anticipated that it will be completed in 2060. Life cycle cost analysis. A simulation is run to ascertain the demand potentials for each TSDR function after converting the casual loop diagram into a stock and flow diagram. The demand to revenue potential forecasts that this simulation produce in the form of several outputs will be modified to fit the intended tariff scenarios. The Trans Sumatra Toll Road is intended to run along Sumatra Island's east route as well as two connecting corridors that connect the island's western and eastern halves. The trip volume will be projected in this simulation for each of the 22 segments of the toll road. Forecasting the volume of travel will have a significant impact on the income possibilities. Additionally, toll tariff scenarios will be utilized to project the revenue potential of the toll road's primary purpose. Three different tariff situations are looked at in this revenue simulation. The main corridor tariff and the linking corridor tariff are two categories in which these pricing situations are categorized. The possibilities are based on PT Jasamaga's 150 IDR per kilometer average mileage range. The three tariff scenarios revenue prediction is followed by a life cycle cost LCC analysis. Starting from the first year of operation for each planned TSTR segment, a 40-year LTC analysis will be done. The discounted rate used in the LTC analysis was 6.81%. The bracketed results or the negative net present value NPV indicates that the investment won't reach break even throughout the 40-year simulation. Eight of the 22 TSTR segments for the low tariff scenario provide negative net present values NPVs, showing that the internal rate of revenue IRR is still below the discounted rate and that the segments are not commercially viable. 19 out of 22 TSDR segments for the intermediate tariff scenario have positive NPVs. With an average IRR of 11.34%, this scenario outperforms the prior one. 20 of the TSR's 22 segments for the high tariff case have positive NPVs. In this high tariff situation, the average IRR is 12.61%. The segments Tibing Tingi, Limapala and Sigli Banda Ake still have low net present values in this case. In addition to prolonging the period of concession, tariff engineering may be considered for the two portions to make them financially feasible. Multifunctional cost analysis. A revenue prediction is made for each additional TSDR function before doing the TSDR lifecycle cost analysis for numerous functions. The six additional TSDR functions as projections are displayed in figure six. The development of rest areas and tourism parks generates the most revenue from these added functions, whilst fiber optic networking and the integration of motorcycle lanes contribute the least to the enhanced functional engineering of the TSDR. Additionally, the revenue weighing of other functions is carried out to assess the revenue contribution of each other TSDR functions. A revenue contribution of 34.39% is made by the function of developing rest areas and a revenue contribution of 32.54% is made by the function of developing tourism parks. The motorcycle lane integration, the fiber optic networking functions, make up the increased TSTR functions that provide the least amount of money. A single function TSTR and a multifunction TSTR's revenue are compared in figure 8. The graph demonstrates that the TSR's income prediction has increased by around 20% as a result of the extra services. Additionally, the TSDR project's lifecycle cost LCC analysis is carried out by choosing the best possible mix of new functions. Eight function possibilities are offered in the LCC analysis and each of them will be tested against the three tariff scenarios. Three criteria are used in the financial feasibility examination of the aforementioned alternative functions. Internal rate of return IRR, net present value NPV and payback period PBP. It was determined that alternative E is the most practical option based on the internal rate of return and payback period factors. It's important to consider indeed. According to the research, there are six more TSDR project services that can increase revenue, developing rest areas, creating tourism parks, integrating medial trains, integrating dry ports, integrating motorcycle lanes and fiber optic networking. 
to examine the viability of investing in the DSTR project based on the chosen route and new functions, three tariff scenarios have been simulated. The findings show that adding functions will increase the DSTR project's viability financially by yielding internal rates of return that range from 8.28% to 13.77% for the first three scenarios put forth. So, that's all about the financially insane road construction project in recent times.